Hi, I'm Bridget, and this is my co-host, Shani. And we're from Romance at a Glance. We wanted to drop by and let you know that this podcast isn't for kids. Katie and Nathan curse about as much as we do. And if that's not your thing, we totes get it. We never yuck anyone's yum. But in this case, this isn't the show for you. If you do like a little swearing with your podcast, then you are going to love our show, where we review all genres of romance novels. Expect 1,000% honest reviews, spontaneous singing, funny anecdotes, and naughty language. New episodes of Romance at a Glance drop every Friday. Now, enjoy Queen's Podcast. Hi, this is Katie. And this is Nathan. And you're listening to Queen's Podcast, the show about badass women in history. Nathan. Katie, Katie, Katie. What's up? Not much, not much. Are you ready to go to the 15th century with me? Let's hop on in our time machine. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway. Hey, guys. Thanks for tuning in today. Today, we're going to talk about Jaquetta of Luxembourg. I like to call her Jaquetta. Jaquetta. Or Jaquita. I love her name. Yeah. Because everybody is Margaret, Mary, Elizabeth, and she is the only Jaquetta that like only one that ever was I think there's other no, there's in the other world, ones. but she's probably the only one that we're ever going to cover like yeah she's like, super famous jump who is Jaquetta of Luxembourg so she was the mother of one of the queens that we previously did Elizabeth Woodville um and she was a major player in the English Civil War what we call the War of the Roses yes so today we're just going to do part one um so Nathan tell us about this drink you made I like it a lot better than the last one that you made. Yeah, the for... last one was battery acid. Yeah, if um, if you haven't listened to episode two for Isabella of Castile, Nathan made a really interesting drink. It was horrible. <laughs> um, so this time I decided to wing it and make my own drink and not like get any inspiration and just do just, my own thing. You, just, you went rogue? <clears throat> yeah, I totally went rogue, nice. like Sarah Palin style. <laughs> um, and then, so on this one, I got inspired by Jaquetta's family, we'll get into it later, being uh, related to Melusina or the uh, she's a mermaid she's a water <laughs> we'll talk about it in a minute but yeah their family said that they were descendants of a water goddess yeah so and I it's wanted a water to call, themed cocktail yeah I wanted to call it ocean water but I was like no that's a drink at Sonic so I can't really do that yeah but I'll for do, our non-American listeners yeah y'all are like, what the fuck is <laughs> what that what the fuck is Sonic um, but, so I'm calling it mermaid juice okay um, and it's blue carousel um, rum pineapple juice and soda. And we'll have pictures of them um, up on Instagram and Twitter later today. It tastes like you're sitting on the beach. Yeah, they're them. really they're, nice. They're really, they're really good, nice. So. I don't, um, my goat, like I never, when I'm making drinks at home, I never really do sugary or fruity drinks. So this is pretty much the only time I ever yeah. drink fruity drinks. So I couldn't be drinking this all night, but for just no. like two drinks. Yeah, for a couple of drinks. It's yeah, it's really nice. And it's strong too. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so J- Jack Hedda. She was born somewhere between 14, 15, and 14, 16. We really don't know. We don't know. Like we've said, we've said with plenty of our queens, it doesn't matter how important a family you were born to. A lot of times they just didn't write down women's birthdays. Yeah, and I also... Not was, even the year. Jesus I was Christ. Yeah, I was also reading of that because it was like the Hundred Years Wars and all that mm-hmm. shit going on. She was moving around a lot too. She yeah. wasn't really being stationary in certain one place or another. Yeah, she her was, family was bouncing around a lot. Yeah. Um, her, so let's talk about her family. She was born into the French nobility. And, y'all, this is a super well-connected family. Oh, yeah. This is not one of these starting at the bottom, now we're here stories. No, they're wealthy. (laughs) She was born almost at the top. She, um, her father, Peter, was the count. He was a count on two accounts. Ooh, bougie. (laughs) He was the count of St. Paul Mm -hmm. and the count of Brienne. Um, she's like the the countess of everything. <laughs> yeah, she's sometimes call, also referred to Jaquetta of Saint Paul. Through her father's side, they were descendants of Charlemagne. Yeah, which he was he was the first Christian French king, correct? Yeah, I big think? French king. And so everybody so like everybody. I feel like everybody in English nobility and French nobility all claim, oh, we're from Charlemagne. Yeah, <laughs> and on her mother's side, her mother Margaret was um, of the Beau House, mm-hmm. which is like a really, really 
powerful noble family in they France. They got that ka-ching, ka-ching, because they're from the Orsini and the Medici yeah, family. Yeah, they're related to the Medici, yeah. and the, so they're connected to English royalty, French royalty, and Italian. Hi, Donna Ho. So she's connected no matter where she mm-hmm. goes. And um, she had seven siblings. So, yeah, their families are pretty fertile. <laughs> yeah. All of them, it's really noteworthy. She had seven siblings, and unless there's, like, a sibling that was just not documented, like yeah, a stillbirth that may or have something. Happened. That's possible. But all the seven ones that were documented made it to adulthood, and that's... Rare. That's very rare. She's, she's a good breeding stock. So let's talk about an interesting thing. Yeah, where we got the theme for the drink. So her family, the story goes that her family is descendant from this water mythical water creature named <laughs> Melusina. And it's a really, really old story that... Um, yeah, it's, it was in northern France, and we'll actually go into this in our Patreon episode we'll a little bit. Talk about it more. Yeah, but she she's actually the bitch that's on the Starbucks cup. Yeah, she's, mm-hmm. the, she's the mermaid on the Starbucks cup. But no, so it's a really, really old story. So there's lots of different accounts, but the basic gist of all of them is that the very first count of... Luxembourg. Some of I read that his name is Raymond. I read Siegfried. So Raymond or Siegfried. So we're such gonna go, similar names. Yeah, yeah they're so similar. <laughs> we're just gonna go with Raymond. Okay. We're just gonna go commit to it and then go with it. So, the first count of Luxembourg, Raymond. He <laughs> he's walking in the forest one day. You know, and just hunting, and then all of a sudden he sees this fine ass bitch and just, just sitting you know, there. Like people in stories like this are want to do. He like immediately falls in love with her and right. is like, you have to marry me. Fucking marry me right now! And she's sort of like, mm, I mean, I don't know if that's a great idea, being that I'm just some chick you just saw in the forest. Yeah, like, this is this is normal. This and is normal. This is totally normal. And he's like, nope, I won't take no for an answer. You gotta marry me. And she's like, fine. I'll marry you under one condition. And that's while you never disturb me while I'm taking a bath. Yeah, and I also read accounts is that you can't see her on Saturday. I also read like <laughs> you can't be around whenever she's giving birth. Yeah, so it's like oh, wow. the stories kind of vary, but it's some sort it's of stipulation. A similar stipulation of, of what's going on. There are limits to when we can be around each other. Or whatever. So they get married, and then everything is cool for years and years and years. But Ray just can't handle the fucking suspense and not even knowing like what's going on now. So he peeps in in the bath one day and, and sees. Uh, uh, oh fuck! She's a fish. Yeah. <laughs> she's, what the fuck? It makes me think. Do you remember that movie Splash? Yes. It made yes. me think of like that scene where she's trying to dry off her fish tail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, so this is supposedly where she's from. So Count <laughs> Raymond finds out that he's Tom Hanks in Splash. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that's supposed to be like the start of the Luxembourg family, the family yeah, of the Counts the of Luxembourg. Line. <laughs> but like yeah. we were talking about earlier, uh, we were talking about the Hundred Years' War and how that's where we couldn't find like where she was born. And so all that. let's so, like talk just. Obviously, we're not going to do a deep dive into the Hundred Years' War because... It, it lasted 100 years, plus. It actually lasted... I think it was 113 years. Yeah. It, it was, was actually... Plus 100... It was three different wars that... So there were going and going So there were going. little breaks in between them, but they were so consistently amongst the same people, mm-hmm. England and France, over the same shit mm-hmm. that people usually just clump it into one war. Yeah. Because it's the same... No they're point. all the same thing. <laughs> And so um, it was called the Hundred Years' War. So you'll remember our girl, Matilda of Flanders. Maddie. Maddie. In her episode, we talked about how her husband had been the Duke of Normandy, which is in France. Yes. And then he came over and became King of England. I'm the King of England now. So now the Kings of England still have like a lot of land in France. So that means they have to go pay taxes and pay fealty. Real confusing. To the French king. (laughs) And English kings don't like having to pay fealty to another king. Because there's a fucking ocean between them. Yeah. (laughs) But they still want their land. Yeah, they're like, I still want to stay here. They want to have that cake and eat it too. I don't want to pay taxes. Yeah. Then in the 1300s, the French king died, and the closest living male relative was his nephew. 
Edward the Third, King of England, who was Isabella France's son. The she wolf. Because everyone's fucking related. Surprise, surprise. So and we're probably gonna do more episodes on people involved in this. I mean, <laughs> later. definitely, definitely. It's gonna be, there's so many. There's just so many um, interesting stories that come out of the Hundred Years' War. So the tensions were high, and yeah. everything just catapulted into war. And it's yes. basically just a hundred years, a hundred plus years. Of England of a, being like, we're the king of France. And France being like, no, I'm the and king the, of France. Je suis the king. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think king is how you say it. No, no. I, I don't I'm think. the king. Je suis the king. No. <laughs> so her baguette. Fam- I'm sorry. Oh my God, baguette. What? Because they eat baguettes. Uh, yes, I know, but where did that come from? I, I imagine he's a French king eating a baguette. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Anyway, anyway. So her, her family is involved in these fucking wars. Mm-hmm. So they're in because they're, they're from the northern French areas, and that's exactly where we're talking about right yeah, now. Yeah. So Luxembourg and Burgundy were, even though the French territories that pay fealty to France, they were buddies with England. <coughs> so, her family was actually on the English side. Yes. Like, they wanted the English kings to be king of France. So, that might be important later. <laughs> maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe. So, we don't really know much about her upbringing, and maybe, again, it's because she's moving around all the time. And or they she's... just didn't think she would ever be important, so they yeah, didn't document again, her. Again, history's a bag of dicks, and they bag don't really dicks, write any, anything about women, so yeah. they didn't know. So, but... I think it would be logical to assume that she grew up, like, with her mother and father, like, Mm -hmm. living with them, Mm -hmm. or maybe, like, also with her uncle, who was very powerful and important, just because usually if if children were often sent off to be wards, like, we talked about that in the Anne Boleyn episode, Mm -hmm. she was, like, how Anne Boleyn was sent off to be a ward um, in a different place Ah. that was documented. It was never documented anywhere that she went somewhere else for her education. So I think it makes sense to assume that she stayed with her mom and dad or like with her immediate family, like her, maybe uncle. her uncle or something so like that. So fun fact yeah. about uh, her uncle, her uncle actually had Joan of Arc. Yeah. Her, and uh, she may or may not have seen Joan of Arc. She, I mean, it's possible. It's her very uncle, possible. Um, when we say fun fact, it's fun fact for everybody except Joan of Arc. <laughs> 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 yes, because she was held captive. Oh, it's not fun <laughs> fact. But yeah, her uncle, John of Luxembourg, was the one that held... Joan of Arc. For, he had a huge bargaining chip. Like he, he yeah. Yeah, he's like he held, Joan, he, he held Joan of Arc. I want to say for about six months. I mm. don't don't fact me on that. I'm not entirely sure. But she, he held I her. Think for, it was like four. To he six held her months. for a while. It was a while. And the only reason that he didn't give her over to the English right away was that his uh, I think it was his mother, the Dowager Countess, was just like we they're can't. Gonna, they're we gonna can't, kill her. Yeah, gonna we kill can't. Her. But then that countess died, and he was just like, "Here you go." Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's. To- I mean, they're definitely contemporaries. They were definitely. They were around it, each other. At, we at don't. The we same have. Time. We have no documentation of if they ever met or not. But it would be logical to assume that they were definitely both aware of each other, and she yes. like they may have been at the same place at the same time. So we know a little bit about her education. I mean, not we're just kind of guessing and pulling from like the what was going on standard around this education for the somebody time. who's a noble. She would have. She definitely spoke English because they were. It would have been. It would have made sense for her to speak English. I, I think she'd be doing like the dancing, the music, the sewing. The... Uh, she definitely learned how. She definitely was literate. Oh yeah, she was yeah. definitely literate. You know, religious studies and stuff she like loved that. Books. If anything out of the ordinary for her education took place, we just don't know about it. Yeah, it was just yeah. So we really don't know what she looked like but per we can, se. We can but we guess, can guess because we, we can know. guess because number one, her daughter spoiler alert: she has a daughter. And uh, no, episode ten, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's really fucking pretty and, and so really beautiful. It's fair to assume that, that she, she was, was probably good looking, and, and we would have uh, pretty features. And we know her daughter. We know at least two of her daughters were blonde, mm-hmm. so it's fair to assume that she didn't have dark hair. Yes. And mm-hmm. um, we know Elizabeth Woodville had a real fair complexion, so it's fair to assume she wasn't, like, olive-toned or anything. She was probably blonde, 
Or Dirty Blonde, or yeah, you know, maybe like Auburny that. Reddish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but but anyway, we, there's no portraits there's at no all. Portraits of her at mm-hmm. all, mm-hmm. which no. is crazy. Yeah. So since we just don't know anything in between, um, like any concrete facts about her, the first thing we can really talk about event in her life is her first marriage. Because obviously that was, if she's going to be a nobility in northern France she's, that's supporting England, she's going to find a nice ass man in England and guess what? She does. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> she, gets, her, she gets lucky on this This one. marriage is a huge fucking deal. Well, I don't know how lucky even then he was like 40 and <laughs> 17. Oh, sorry. I, I vomited in my mouth a little. Yes. So in 1433, she was 16 or 17, and um, she is engaged to John, the Duke of Bedford. And this is such a big fucking deal. He is uncle to the English king. He pulls, they, he pulls the strings with the king. He really does. No, he was... The king of England at this time is a, is a child. And we know... If you listen to our show a lot, you know that um, child kings usually do a great job. Yeah. Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> so, he was one of... So, the Duke of Bedford was one of the main advisors um, to his nephew, who was little baby King Henry. Yeah. The, um, the sixth. Yeah. And so, John, the Duke of Bedford, is basically mayor of France. Yeah. <laughs> like, they send, they send him over France, and they're just like, make sure... Don't fuck anything up. Like, yeah. just like make sure that the troops are paid. Make sure that you keep the French in line and try to like keep war at bay. He's he, he's basically the mayor of France as yeah. far as as far as the eyes of the English. And he had been married uh, before to a lady named Anne. Yeah, this yeah. I, this is and this is weird to me. So like we already mentioned that. Um, England's big allies in France were Burgundy and Luxembourg. Yeah. So he had been married to Anne, who was the daughter of the Duke of Luxembourg. And they had a very happy marriage. Yeah. They Everybody was always talking about how in love they seemed. They didn't have any children. Which um, is a big deal. Yeah, which is a big deal. Um, whenever you're a Duke and you have like a line to carry on. So Anne dies... And you're supposed to wait a year to remarry. Yeah, I mean that's I even mean, now. It's a little. I mean, it's a little weird if you remarry that fast. After, yeah, you know? especially for being in love before. Yeah. But that's kind of weird. And so he breaks protocol and arranges his marriage to Jaquetta like only like four months later. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's like totally this, underhanded, just like randomly and comes this out of nowhere. Obviously, really, really offends the family. Anne's family, the yeah. um, the her brother, I believe, is the current Duke of. Like, bitch, you didn't love her. He's like, and I just don't understand. Like, I understand he wanted to remarry. He wanted to remarry somebody young in hopes to get an heir. But what? Couldn't he have waited another seven months? Like, I yeah. don't, I don't get it. Right. I, re- I was she just like so fucking hot that he was like, I have. To marry that immediately like I mean I don't know uh, I mean her daughter was the same way so maybe it's possible that I it's just know. like it's just, it's just very very strange to me so anyway John loved to read he was a big avid reader John was a he's a Besides the whole Joan of Arc thing, being that he was the one that made sure she got burnt at the stake, yeah. Uh, is that, is that, that whole thing? Isn't that interesting? Her uncle's the one that held like held Joan of Arc. And then John Duke of Bedford is the one that made sure she got executed. And I think her uncle was a cardinal and arranged to help arrange yeah. the marriage mm-hmm. between. So all oh, these uncles stepping in and trying yeah. to run shit. Yeah, uh, like you were saying, he loved to learn. He had the largest library collection, maybe not the largest, but one of the largest library collections um, in all of Europe. And yeah, and it wasn't just like Jesus centric. Yeah, it usually, was... usually these large libraries were religious text but he was into astronomy controversial philosophy. very controversial he for had him. an alchemy lab mm-hmm. and he may and he had would hire astronomers and astrologers which i think were kind of the same thing at that time to make charts that was that was controversial like you said yeah it's, very um, controversial that's very alchemy astrology that is like next door to witchcraft yeah so it was not <laughs> something that a if he wasn't a duke and somebody would have found his alchemy lab... In the they gym. probably would have been like, he's a witch! Exactly. So I don't know if his family just didn't know about his like alternative interests or if they just looked the other way. Yeah. You know? 
But um, also, he was a tough fucking no, general. He was a very good general. He would, and he he took no shit from anybody. He was a stern man. I could see Jaquetta being all 16, 17, being kind of freaked out to go marry this guy who's, like, a tough general like that. Like, yeah, how like, do you think she felt when they were like, you're going to go marry? I mean, I'm sure she's she like, was, okay, I guess I gotta uh, hope he doesn't kill me in his sleep. I know. <laughs> well, I bet she, I mean, she would have always known that she was not going to have an opinion on who she got to oh, marry. of course. She would have always known that, and she would have probably guessed that she was probably going to be married to an old man, because man, that was kind of, like, the dumb thing back then. Mm-hmm. I just can imagine being like just knowing his reputation and being such a tough ass general and her being like uh but <laughs> that might be counteracted with he had a reputation of being so good to his first wife like he didn't have a lot of mistresses he was yeah. they had a loving relationship so I'm Uncle sh- to the king like yeah. come on well like- regardless of how she felt her family was like fucking jackpot <laughs> this is amazing and think about it her family has a bunch of kids yeah. uh, in their family well, no, that's def- so that they can is- elevate all of those people into high and positions and I'm sure that's also why she was chosen specifically not just because of the family connections but also because they are a fertile stock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like we were saying, John's first wife had only been dead for a couple of months and then he's already bang, boom, getting married. Let's again. get... So the wedding was... Um, we don't have a whole, whole lot of details on the wedding, but you... it was secret. But you would have to assume it was um, lots of feasting and oh, like of course. dancing. Of course. They got married um, on April 20th, 1433. 420. <laughs> Did you know that? The cathedral that got married in, I don't know how to say that, Turin, it would be my guess. The Turin? I don't know. But it's not It's not there anymore, because I wanted to put pictures in the notes, but I love old ass, I love old ass cathedrals. churches and cathedrals yeah. and castles and stuff. But her uncle, who was a bishop, conducted the ceremony, and... He's the whole one that arranged the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, I think his so. name was Louis. Yes, yeah. I, I believe so. <laughs> what a, any French Frenchman, <laughs> Frenchman, <laughs> Frenchman. Any Frenchman, like for like seven hundred years, I could be like, I think his name was Louis, and probably be right. <laughs> um, yeah, feasting, dancing. They probably had a bedding ceremony because that was just custom, <laughs> but then. not like creepy, like but not like Medici. like just where like they put them, they put the couple to bed and then close the door and leave them. Um, but not like, yeah, not like Catherine like, de' Medici. Lights out, wink, wink, nod, yeah. nod. Have a good night, guys. Not like Catherine de Medici sitting and watching. Like, you. okay, please consummate your marriage so we can all so see we it. can all watch it. That, that's uh, weird. <laughs> praise Jesus. She was not subjected to that. Right. So let's take a quick break. We're gonna refill our mermaid juice drinks. Yeah. And um, listen to a word from a friend of the show. Burst your bubble. Be right back. Do you know how the Oompa Loompas became the Oompa Loompas? What about the connection between the eugenics movement and Dracula? Or how Aunt Jemima pancakes have a racist past? Whether you nodded yes I know or yes I want to hear about it, Burst Your Bubble might be the perfect podcast for you. I'm Morgan Jaffe, and on Burst Your Bubble, I talk about isms and phobias in pop culture and how media is influenced by history. We'll talk about racism in a movie, sexism in a TV show, or homophobia in a song. Check us out and subscribe to the show. You can listen to Burst Your Bubble wherever you find podcasts. Want more info? Visit BurstYourBubblePodcast.com. All right, so now our sweet baby Jackie is officially the Duchess of Bedford. BFD. Big fucking deal. Uh, yeah. (laughs) She is the second highest ranking lady in England. Right behind the king's mother. The king's mother is the only person that outranks her in England. And in English eyes, she's also, she's the highest ranking lady in France. Yeah. Because she's married to, like, the mayor of France. (laughs) That was not his title. If anybody... Please never listen to us for source material for any papers you may be writing. <laughs> yeah. We make up terms. She was he was not the mayor of France, there but that's a, just the best way. Yeah, it wasn't the term, but no. <laughs> But no, um big deal. Soon after the wedding, they traveled to Paris and they stayed in the fucking Louvre. The Louvre, honey. The Louvre? Uh, the Louvre, honey. <laughs> you know, I think it's really interesting that 
she grew up in a time of war, but Luxembourg seemed to never really have it. Like, it never actually touched them. Yeah. It's not something that they saw firsthand. But now she's traveling to Paris with her husband, and she he has to put down a revolt yeah. uh, in Paris. And so all of a sudden, the war is real to her now. It's like she has in to front see, of her face. She sees it. It's like they're basically on their honeymoon, and she has to see her husband be that tough general that he is. And, like, put down a revolution. That's very intimidating. Yes. <laughs> you are like, I'm 16. <laughs> We're 17. Just I don't got really my know. new car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so, no. It wasn't pretty. But speaking of things that were pretty. Nice segue. <laughs> she would have started to be familiar with John's squire, this guy named Richard Woodville. Dick. <laughs> Dick as Richard. Richard is Dick Woodville. Oh, okay, I thought you were calling. I thought you were calling Richard. No, Dick. I'm calling Dick. You're just talking about <laughs> because he was probably really sexy. Let's, yeah, let's be honest. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, maybe important. What we're later. getting at <laughs> is that in his employ, um, John the Duke of Bedford had this guy named Richard Woodville, yeah. and maybe he'll be important later. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she goes to meet the royal family and. They hop had on really, a boat to England. Yeah, they hadn't really been married that long, and now let's hop on over to England now. Meet the fam. Yeah. So um, they travel to England, and she's introduced to the king and the Dowager Queen. Uh, the king at this time is 12. Yeah, baby and child. And he loves Jaquetta. I mean, of course he would. Like, they're closer in age than yeah. anyone else around. <laughs> yeah, like all his advisors 17. are like 40 years old. Yeah, and so she's like the only other like youthful person really yeah. kicking around. And she was, she was probably smart and intelligent, you know, of course he would love her. There's yeah. nothing not to love about her. And most people loved her too, so. Yeah, um, but she was a big hit with. The British family. So yeah, and luckily, awesome. like at this time, whenever she's over in England, there's like a huge fucking plague mm-hmm. in Luxembourg where she's from. She really lucked Dodged out. The bullet. Yeah, she absolutely big did. fucking time. And sadly, her dad ended up mm-hmm. dying from that. Mm-hmm. And um, she couldn't go and be, you know, be at the funeral. Mm-hmm. Obviously, one because. I don't want to get. I don't want to get the. Plague. I don't want to get the plague. And, Number two, um, it's a really long trip. It's, it is a long trip. <laughs> and so um, the king made sure that at St. Paul's Cathedral, this is really heartwarming to me. I don't know if this was normal, but mm-hmm. I thought that was really sweet. The king made sure at St. Paul's Cathedral that they did like a little service for a mock him. Open, like, yeah, funeral. just like did a little like service for Jaquetta's dad, and it's just like it just shows how eager the her husband's family was to take her in, and I mm-hmm. think that's really nice. Because she must have been, like, a stranger in a strange land, and they were, like, really good to her. Yeah, so this whole time, she's living in England for over a year. Like, she's mm-hmm. there for a while. Yeah. She's living that cush-ass life. And she's taken re- into culture. She really leaned into English culture, yeah. I think. Because yeah. I think she had been raised to their friends there. You know, it's not... She would have already been kind of familiar with their ways. I think and everything. what they what they said is that she got granted like denization or something like that, which is basically permanent residency. Oh, like it's like she got a status she got a green of like card? basically <laughs> a little bit more than that because yeah. if you're a permanent resident, then you can own land and pay taxes and do that sort of thing. So she got that like immediately within like a year of it because they're like oh yes bitch you're awesome i know she was inducted into the order of the garter which mm-hmm. is like um just like the highest and that was after her dad died i believe it was yeah, like right after so. her dad died i think so so she was just living her best life over yeah, there she to was. be honest they had two palaces in england they had one in london and one in warwickshire mm-hmm. and um Obviously, then they also had rooms wherever the king was staying, whatever palace he was staying in. If they wanted to drop by and visit, he's going to, like, put them up in the suite, you know? Yeah, no, like, it's like he gets the presidential suite. Yeah, yeah. Um, and while they were in England, John had left that dude, Richard Woodville, that we were talking about earlier. Mm, Dick. They left Dick Woodville. <laughs> Dick Wood. <laughs> There's a joke there. I don't have time to explore this. <laughs> we'll circle back. Anyway, um, no, but he left Richard Woodville as the main lieutenant in charge of England's holdings in um, Calais, France. And that's a really big deal for this guy who is like 
from a nobody family. Yeah, getting promoted like so, that. So maybe, know? so again, maybe that'll be important later. I don't know. We'll circle back. Um, <laughs> back to France. <laughs> yeah, England's holding in France like aren't going great. Calais is actually doing fine. The one that Richard Woodville's holding. Yeah, but like uh, there's just revolts. Well, and also. Children aren't supposed to be king. and um, it's, not, it's just not in the cards. They don't know what the hell's going on. And what's going on is that um, the king is not... He's got shitty advisors. Mm. And they're not making sure their troops that are over in Paris, over in France, are getting paid. Yeah, there's no money. So, like, there's basically mutiny. Yeah. Because nobody's getting fucking paid. And then, you know, he... Um, <laughs> You're so angry about it. I am very... <laughs> Me. You send these people over there and they're like, go fight for your country. But, yeah, okay. um, but and I remember, and I remember that the king would call John over her husband at the time and would be like, I, I need money for the wars. And it's like, and it's, you're the one not paying the troops. And he's like, yeah, no, John Bedford was, um, he's like, I would pay the troops, but he did, he did a lot of time pay out of his own pocket, which yeah. he shouldn't have to do, but no. just, um, I mean, he couldn't do it enough to pay every single, you know, soldier or whatever, but he tried. Um, but anyway, Just, and also, since they'd made kind of enemies with Burgundy now, so he had these um, troops basically having, like, a mutiny. Yeah. And then, like, he burned the bridges with burned the bridges with Burgundy. That's a tongue twister. Yeah, that, that would be <laughs> a good burned time. He burned the bridges with Burgundy. They are, you know, kind of starting shit over there. So he's like, all right, we got to get back to France. Yeah. And but. Unfortunately, his health doesn't really go that great at this time. His health had, hadn't been great for a while. A while. It was quite a few months and then it really nosedived at this yeah. time. Yeah. And he ends up dying in 1435. Yeah. And they didn't have any children. Spoiler alert, this definitely wasn't Jackie's fault. <laughs> no, I mean, his previous wife wasn't having kids either. But a lot of people were like, oh, maybe this is like a barren teenager. But um, They're blaming her, but maybe they always, it's they him. Always, they always blame the <laughs> maybe back he's... Then. <laughs> they always blame the woman back then because history is what? A bag of dicks. A bag of dicks. A yeah, bag of dicks. It was, it was, is a bag of dicks. It was his little swimmers just couldn't make it upstream. He did, you know, it's, uh, he did have... Um, one illegitimate child, and I couldn't find out if it was like before his marriage to Anne. Maybe uh, when he was fresh and young and yeah, sweet. maybe when he was like Bitch. a you know. But anyway, <laughs> so um, the king is like. I want my aunt back here in England now. Because <laughs> he's like whining for his aunt Jackie. I want her, but also no, aunt she's Jaquita. Jaquita. <laughs> no, Jaquita. she is. So fucking rich now. Oh, like, she's got bank she, out the ass. Like he's the king's uncle. Like she, and now she's got all, all that cash flow. She inherited <laughs> money. She inherited lands. Mm-hmm. She inherited his entire library. That alone is like a fortune. <laughs> it's like Beauty and the Beast. You, I can see Katie oh. being like <laughs> I'm running around in me in the, in the blue bell dress that she wears. <laughs> yes, Katie absolutely. would be in heaven. I would. <laughs> yes. Um, unless it was just a bunch of books on alchemy, and I'd be like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> right? What the fuck is this? Yeah. So um, the king is like, "We need to get Jaquetta back over here because his." I mean, I think he, you know, he really liked Jaquetta, but also his advisors are like, we need to make sure that her family doesn't try to arrange a marriage for her over there. We need to keep this money in the family. Yeah. We need to marry her to another English duke or earl or count or yeah. some shit like that. So Henry ends up picking up his cell phone, giving little Dick Woodville a call, being like... He calls up a- Richard Woodville and is like, hey... I need my aunt over here, and I can't trust just anyone to bring her over here because she's so beautiful, and they're, they're going to fall in love with her. And you have always been, like, a loyal servant to us, so I'm going to trust you with this. Like, what, whatever you do, just don't fucking marry her. Yeah, and then so Dick ends up being like, okay, yeah, totally. totally. Yeah, I'll bring her over here. no yeah, to the king. It's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this fine-ass bitch. And she's like, oh, shit, he cute. Mm. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Richard Woodville. His father had worked for the Duke of Bedford for a long time. So Richard has basically been serving 
Bedford for his whole life. I would say like middle, middle, upper class. Like yeah, that's well, he's a knight now. He's knighted. Yeah, so he's, so he's up not. There. So he's not nobody, but he's also not Jaquetta's level. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have to assume he was super fucking hot. He uh-huh. was. He was either in his late twenties or very early thirties. But at we this also time. have to assume that she was super hot too. Cause... I think we can both assume that they're both. Sexy, smoke it. They are, they are like Brangelina level. This yeah, is what we're gonna, yeah, this yeah. Is what we're gonna guess. And then they like on this trip over, you know, then they fall in fucking love together. Yeah. <laughs> they fall in love. And it's like on the set of, of Mr. Fall, and Mrs. Smith. Of course they fall in love. She's been. She's a teenager. She's and been, he's like, a, he's about a decade older than her. He's not. But too still, much, that's better than way better by than those that, times. Yeah. She's been married to a sick old man. That's all she's ever known. And <laughs> That's so now awful. and so now she's alone with this hottie. He's um he's he's an an impressive soldier, so we know he's brave and strong. Yeah. He later on, like just from the kind of relationship they have, we have to assume that they're he's kind and he's really nice to her. Mm-hmm. Of course she's going to fall in love with him. I know. And, of course, they have a secret marriage. Yeah. So we can't tell you. Spoiler alert. This happens a lot in this family. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Listen to episode 10. So we can't tell you what year they were married in. We know that they were married by the spring of 1437. Okay. So it was illegal to get married without the king's consent or for, permission. For, for a royal duchess, yes, it was. Yes, somebody like that to get married. You had to get yes. a consent. So they didn't. So when you break the law like that, you kind of don't put it down in writing when it mm-hmm. happened. So that's why we really don't know. I got spring. That's whenever the, what I was reading was more in well, spring. I th- I, well, we know they were. That's that's when what they, they told were, everybody. By 1437 yeah. spring. So we, I mean, for all we know, they could have been married for six months whenever yeah, they, you know. not said anything. Um, we don't know for sure if she was pregnant before or after they got married. Shotgun <laughs> wedding. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yes. I can just totally see if they're like, oh yeah, I'm taking you to go find your new husband. I, I do know. <laughs> like they went to confess to the marriage and, um. Jaquetta's brother, who's now, um, you know, like, running her dad's old position. So the whole court of Luxembourg is like, you need to annul this marriage immediately. Yeah. And so I don't know, like, either, um, but she was like, too late, I'm pregnant. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I wonder if they, like, got married because she got pregnant. I mean, I don't doubt that they were in love. They were definitely in love. Yeah, they were definitely in love. Um, but I wonder if, like, they had their secret wedding and then waited until she was pregnant to tell everybody yeah so that they couldn't make them annul it i don't know that's uh, my theory that's yeah that's probably because that's what her brother was like you have to annul this marriage right now and she's like mm, mm, really can't do that can't do that <laughs> sorry not sorry i'm just imagining jaquetta of luxembourg just writing a letter her, her quill Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Hashtag YOLO. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> anyway. So Henry's pissed. People at court are pissed. And they, there are a lot of bad okay. things that could have happened to them. Oh, no. But instead, they just got a fucking fine. So Richard, they got out just fine. <laughs> Richard, they got out just fine. I mean, it was a heavy fine. It was a thousand pounds. Which is which, a lot of fucking money. Which back then, I know in the Elizabeth Woodville episode, we did like the conversion. I don't... It, it's buku. <laughs> it's buku cash. Um, so you said that Henry was pissed, and I mean, he definitely had to find them, and he had to confiscate some of her lands and some of her money and stuff like that. Because I think it was just like for him, it was like, you're really going to go over my head? Yeah, but Henry had a soft spot for this because his mother. So his mother, um, I'm sure we'll do her one day, Catherine yeah. of Valois. <laughs> this is one of those that we're going to do We're going to do one someday. day. Catherine of Valois, his mother. Um, so um, <laughs> after Catherine of Valois' husband died, she married her, the master of her wardrobe, which he's not even a knight. Oh, he's just the yeah. guy that like made sure her stuff was like dry cleaned. And what was his name? His name was... Owen Tudor, I think. Uh, does that name sound does familiar? Does Tudor sound familiar? I don't know. Anyway, so she had 
secretly married for love a nobody. So I feel like if that wouldn't have just happened in the king's own immediate, immediate family. This marriage wouldn't have happened. Then he may have been, he may have thrown Richard Woodville in jail. Yeah. But mm-hmm. since his mother had like just, just the done same the same thing. thing and he hadn't thrown them in jail, you know, he couldn't really, I think yeah. he had a soft spot yeah. for, and I think he had a soft spot for Jaquetta in general. I think he just really liked her. So anyway, they are going to... Lay low a little bit. <laughs> yeah. They're Don't like, make any noise. Let's kind of do out and be chill for a moment. They move back in. Like a lot of broke couples at the beginning of their marriage, they move back in <laughs> with uh, Richard's parents. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember reading that and being like, oh my gosh. And then they... Don't they end up getting like a castle that... It's like basically rent to own. Like the guy <laughs> was, dies, and they're a, like, "Oh, okay, we're gonna buy it." Like they paid rent for a while, yeah. and then Grafton Manor. Yeah, so they moved to Grafton, which is about sixty miles northwest of London. Yeah, and um, it's not a castle, but a manor. I mean, it's still a fucking fine ass house, you know? Yeah, like not, not lots like of rooms. Like, yeah, yeah they not were not shed. <laughs> absolutely not. And um. Their first child was born there, a little girl, and they called her Elizabeth. And I really think this was probably Jackie's happiest time of her life. Yeah, I think she's they, on cloud nine. They were not at court. They were being newlyweds, being they family. Were just, yeah, they were just being able to like spend time with each other. They, I mean, they had to work, and they had. To, she probably put her sewing to use. Like, they were um, just doing what they could to make ends yeah. meet at this time, basically. Mm-hmm. But I think she was happy. Yeah, she was with the man she loves. Her little family. And then she just, like, starts popping out babies. Babies on babies on babies. So she had Elizabeth in the spring of 1437. Lewis was born in 1438. Anne was born in 1439. Like, boom, boom, boom. So, yeah. I guess anybody that thought that maybe she was barren from her last marriage is now like, oh, no, 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 no. no, no. She is capable. She can have some babies. Um, Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, Laying low didn't last that long. Remember, Richard is a really capable soldier, and he's um, and he's already got, wars. <laughs> and he's already got being like heading the Calais thing under his belt. Yeah, and the wars in France were still going on, and they were they were just like, dude, you, we need you, we need you. To go leave and that's these troops. really fucking scary as the spouse of somebody being like, okay, this big general is going out to war if the war goes south and he's dead. So in 1439, he goes running back to war, but not before he could leave Jackie something to remember him by. Ooh. And that was their son Anthony that was born in 1440. <laughs> <laughs> so she's had so 1437, 1438, 1439, 1440. She's had four babies in four years. She births a baby and gets pregnant. Births a baby. I'm telling oh, you, he geez. like he like hops out of the shower. He's just naked, and then she's and like, she's "Oh shit, like, oh, I'm, pregnant. I'm pregnant." Richard's got his job, but now the job uh, the king has a job for Jackie. Um, Henry was ready for the Hundred Years' War to stop he just so he's gonna make peace and he's gonna do it by marrying this kind of obscure french princess and her name is margaret of anjou and um you may have heard of her yeah (laughs) she is a distant cousin of jackie's yeah because every single person in the story is distant cousin yeah they're all related they're They're all related just, just yeah except except richard and jacquetta they're not related maybe that's why they have Babies on babies on babies. Well, I mean, if ever, if ever you think your science, fam- <laughs> if ever you think your family drama is bad, Ye- this is, uh, oh my god, this is some family drama. <laughs> Wars of the Roses, fucking. Hell. In 1444, Henry asks Jackie. He's like, "Look, I'm going to marry this chick, Margaret of Anjou. I'm going to send like a big crew to go pick her up and bring her back to England." He's like, "But I think Jackie's." Brother was married to her sister. Some, there was it some was kind of some family tie there. Family tie, and they were like, "But that. you guys are gonna. I think y'all are gonna have a lot in common. You've got some family ties. I kind of want you to um, really take her under your wing." And she did. And she did. And they became so close. Like they were, they were best friends. And Jackie was a lot old. Not a lot, but she was quite a bit older than Margaret. 
I feel like they took on like a sister relationship, a mentor relationship. So do you think J- Jackie was definitely the older sister, right? Like you would think she would act like the older sister. Oh no, definitely because she would take her under her wing and be like, "Look, I've already done this. I moved. From, <laughs> I moved from France to England. Oh, I'm going to teach you the customs. I'm yeah. going to teach you the ways." And so she was really lucky to have Jaquetta to be there to show her the ropes. And Jaquetta was pretty lucky because now the queen's obsessed with her and she's getting promotions, promotions, promotions. Yeah, she's at the top of the heat, baby. Because since since she loved her so much, she made Jaquetta chief lady-in-waiting. And that... She's the chief? She's the, she's the chief? <laughs> that is a big pay increase. Yeah, get that money, that honey. Is, get that money, honey. And then the queen convinced the king... To give Richard Woodville a title. So he has like, he's like, mm, I get to make my own name. This is so exciting. Yeah. What am I going to be? Baron Rivers. That sounds like a porn star name. It I'm does. sorry. It does a little bit, doesn't it? I hadn't even thought. It, <laughs> it sounds like a, like I read it. I was like, oh my God. Well, I think I been, saw that name one time. I think it's because like he had to pick a title that a had title. already existed. And, and there was, there had been a Baron Rivers previously that like died out. Like his family line died out. So the title <clears> was just like. Hanging in the air. Floating in the atmosphere. <laughs> and he was just like, grab it. Baron Rivers. Though, it's interesting with the whole Melusina thing. The yeah. water goddess thing. That he chose. That he chose Rivers. rivers. Like, I don't know. I don't know if there was any, like, if they thought about effort, that. Yeah. Or if it just how it turned out. But, yeah, I think it's kind of interesting. But, no, so he's a Baron now. Which also comes with a pay increase. Money, money. So, they needed that pay increase. Because by 1448, (laughs) she... So, in 1444, she had John. In 1445, she had a daughter named Jaquetta. And 1446, she had a son named Lionel. (laughs) Can we just go through these numbers? And in 1448, she had a daughter named Eleanor. She literally has babies year after year after year. I mean, there is a two-year gap between Lionel and Eleanor. Yeah. But she is literally like... Boom, 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 boom. She's baby, making baby, it rain baby. babies. Yeah. <laughs> She's Just absolutely. Make it rain. Make it, make it rain. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the war with France was more or less over. Yeah. Finally. Finally. Because <laughs> 100 years wasn't enough. 113, yeah. 18, or whatever. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and so, as we mentioned, the king wasn't very good at kinging. And wars cost a lot of money. So... Everybody's broke. <laughs> the country is so poor. He married Margaret of Anjou to make peace, but usually when a king marries a foreign bride, it's because that country is going to give them a huge Money. dowry. She didn't come with. I mean, that's if she his came, advisors. That's his advisors. If she his came, advisors didn't do a good job. Yeah, I'm sure when we do the Margaret of Anjou episode, eventually we'll learn more about why. But I mean, she basically her. Dowry was like a gift card to Lowe's and <laughs> and like a coupon to the Olive Garden. You know, like it wasn't endless soup and salad. <laughs> you know what? I'm sorry. We went, I may marry her. <laughs> we went to, we went to brunch this morning, and I really I was I haven't been to Olive Garden in like ten years or something. I know. And I was just like, I want Olive Garden, and my husband was just like. No, absolutely. <laughs> because Austin has so many so amazing they, restaurants. I know, He's right? like, we're not going to Olive Garden. I think what it really is is just the salad with like the little pepperoncinis in it. You know it's what just, I mean? Those little spicy. It's that it's endless. Is oh the my thing. God. Anyway, so Olive Garden, if you'd like to sponsor us, so if anybody's still listening. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. We have digressed into Olive Garden. So, actually. Something I didn't put in the notes at all, but I kind of want to... Do you mind if I do a digression about, like, something crazy that happened at court around this time? Yeah. So, she had been married to the Duke of Bedford, but there was another royal duke, the Duke of Gloucester. His wife got charged with, like, witchcraft around this time. Of course. So, there was, like, this huge trial or whatever, and um, the wife got found guilty of witchcraft... The wife that got found guilty of witchcraft um, just had to, like, live. She had to do, like, a Cersei Lannister thing where you walk through the street. Uh, Not naked. But, but, like, barefoot similar. and, like, in, like, just your nightgown or whatever. Um, then she got put in life in prison and had her marriage annulled to the Duke. I'm just wondering if Jackie's being like, fuck, I've got all these books on alchemy. Oh, God. You know? I didn't think about that. You know? And so, like, oh. I mean... 
I just kind of dabbed into that um, I think that I get, trial a little bit, and Jaquetta's name didn't come up at all. So I, I would don't think know though that. that she would be covered because I believe people would know that her ex husband had been into alchemy. Yeah, and shit, so I don't know, but I still, like, I still, I think but, I'd be like, I'd be like. Let's put those underneath the bed. Let's get rid of these. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's bring these to Goodwill. Let's burn those books and burn yeah, our bras. Exactly. <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, that's just something that was going on at that time that I thought was interesting. Henry just really sucks at being king. And the country's broke. And people are starting to get really pissed off at him. They yeah. don't like him very much. So there is a little bit of a revolt with the Yorks. There's just like um, a mini peasants revolt in London. We don't know for sure if Jackie was there, but her husband definitely got like held up in the Tower of London while it was happening for a while. The whole thing was that they were just like, your advisors suck, get new advisors. And it's true. And it's true. <laughs> but if you actually look at the line of succession, the next part, until Henry has kids, the next person in line is this guy named Richard Duke of York. Richard Duke of York had a good head on his shoulders. Like, yeah. he was not frivolous. He thought about the common people. So it's really no surprise that people were like, we... We, we, we want this guy helping you out. Yeah. The other guy was yeah. like, what, 12? Before, whenever he started running the country? Like, he was oh, a he baby. was a baby when he, he started running baby. the country. Though, by the time of this revolt, he was probably like 25, something like that. But, yeah, still, but still, as we've discussed, like... They're all bad kings. If, the baby kings are Whenever all bad. you become king as a child, they're almost always suck at it as an adult. Yeah. I'm sure there's an exception that we haven't come across yet, but so far, all the ones we've come across... Are bad. Yeah, they're not good at it. Because they don't... Grow up seeing your father be king. You you have a good example of what's going. But happen. instead, you're just you've just been king since the day you were born, or and whatever. You don't know, how the fuck you don't do know it. what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Duke of York, Henry the Sixth, and his people are the Lancastrian branch of the royal family, and their cousins are the Yorks. The Yorks. They're all Plantagenets. Yes. And then there's two branches of the Plantagenet family: the Lancasters and the Yorks. Not to be confused with the Lannisters and the Starks. <laughs> <laughs> no. George R. R. Martin definitely pulls from this time uh, yeah, in history. The is, yeah, of course. Yeah, remember Izzy of France's son Edward the Third? Yeah. Well, he had lots of kids, but specifically, one of his sons was the Duke of Lancaster, and one of his sons was the Duke of York. And just long story short... They both think that they deserve the throne. Yes. <laughs> That's long story short. And honestly, I think if Henry VI would have just chosen Richard Duke of York as his main advisor, the whole War of the Roses could have been avoided. Yep. It's usually something, whenever you look back in history, if you're like, this one little thing was tweaked. It could have been avoided. <laughs> so the Woodvilles are strictly Lancastrian. Lancastrian to the max. I mean, why wouldn't they be? Yeah, don't... they're supporting Henry right now. Yeah. They've... Henry set up all this stuff, you know, so don't they're behind him. bite the hand that feeds you. Yeah, that's and true. And speaking of feeding people, she... <laughs> in 1450, she gives birth to Margaret. In 1451, she gives birth to Martha. Uh, that year after year, she's just like, boom, boom. Boom. Like, when she wants to have babies, a baby, babies, babies, she wants babies. to have a baby. Well, also, there's, I think, also her and her husband just really fucking loved each other, and there was no form of birth control yeah. that they knew, so um, it was just a sign of that it was obviously a love match. <laughs> <laughs> they must have fucked off. Because you, you can only get pregnant, like, two days out of the month, so I feel like every time they were together, because they were apart a lot, because he would have to go to France, or he would yeah. have to go wherever he was needed as a soldier. But I feel like every time they got together, they must have been... Boing, 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 baby. Boing, 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 baby. <laughs> you should teach a sex ed class. <laughs> it, it, it'll be theater and dance. <laughs> boing, 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 <laughs> baby. <laughs> Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> King Henry hops on the crazy train. Oh my and... <laughs> god, y'all. So Henry has... I don't know what you would call it now because like... I can't think of ever hearing something like this. Okay, so he's so fucking inbred that a lot of a lot of these um, royals 
do have mental disabilities because oh, they're so fucking inbred. So you hear a lot about like there's a king of France who thinks he's made of glass. There's yeah. one of the one of La Loca one from La Loca. Spain. And so Henry has um they still have some holdings in France and they learn that they've lost Bordeaux, which is a huge holding. He doesn't have Bordeaux wine anymore. I, know. I mean, I went through it. He's got to pay guess. tariffs on it. Now, I, I would guess. throw a temper tantrum too. And so, <laughs> what he did was go completely catatonic for like a year and a half. Like, he wasn't sleeping because sometimes he'd have his eyes open. No, they were like literally having to like change his diaper. Yeah, he wasn't in a coma, and... is the thing. Like, he was. He was just completely... Catatonic. Yeah, they would change... They would have to change him every day. They would have to, like, pour soup down his throat. Yeah. And, um... Campbell's chicken noodle. <laughs> I'm sure that's what it was. It was absolutely... They were like, run to the store. Give me some Campbell's. Stock up on the Campbell's. Um, no, but this is... But also, <laughs> he's right, in this, like, different La La Land brain. He's just... He may as well be dead. Yeah. And I think, I really think everybody in court was just waiting for him to die. I believe the castle, one of the castles that he was in is supposedly haunted by him being in one of these catatonic crazy states. Oh. I think there's a castle, I forget which one it is. When we do the Margaret of Andrew episode eventually, we definitely need to do a deeper dive into whatever the fuck happened with Henry in this yeah. period. But that was there's some crazy shit that goes down with him. But, so... Jaquetta's mistress, the uh, Queen Maggie, after being married for eight years, because also we should mention King Henry is very, very pious, so he had a hard yeah. time getting his wife pregnant because he just equated sex with sin. And so after eight years of marriage, Margaret of Anjou is finally pregnant. Oh. And then, like, after she finds out she's pregnant, she's only like a few months pregnant, and he goes into this catatonic state he goes into this like sleep like La La Land. just <laughs> and can you even imagine back then like just now we have doctors and, and we're, what were the, what would you they think were just like do we bleed him <laughs> do we throw leeches on him do we perform an exorcism like they yeah. have no idea what to do and so I'm sure they did it all too the queen was in, like, an absolute state, which I'm sure you could imagine. Yeah, you're like, pregnant, about to have a baby. And Jackie, you know, is her chief lady-in-waiting, so whatever stress the queen is going through, she's Jackie's going through. She's finding, yeah, she's trying to find somebody to tell her to help her through it, you know? Like, yeah. somebody getting advice, and it's like, oh, I don't know what the fuck to do either. Yeah, she, <laughs> she's like, oh, um... It's all going to be good. The queen had her baby. Thank God. Um, Jaquetta, I mean, it didn't, I couldn't find anywhere definitely saying Jaquetta was there, but she was her best friend and her chief lady-in-waiting. Yeah. And then guess what? Jaquetta has another baby. (laughs) I mean, luckily, because history is a bag of dicks, I have to say, luckily, Margaret of Anjou had a boy. She had a healthy boy. I wish I could just say she had a healthy child, period, and everything was good. But Yeah, but it's, but, a, uh, it's a bag of dicks. Since it was a boy, Margaret of Anjou, and I have to assume Jaquetta was there to go and, like, present their her son to the king. And can you imagine that scene? Like, he's just, like, he's, like, on his throne, just all, like, out of it, and they, like, present, and he doesn't even... He's just out of it. <sighs> On happier note, Jaquetta also had a baby, so they got to be <laughs> pregnant together. <laughs> They're like BFFs for preggers people. Good for them. So she had a son named Richard in 1453, and her best friend Maggie had a son named Edward in 1453. They got they, they like had their uh, baby showers at the same time. So while all this happy shit is going on, the Duke of York is, like, gaining more and more support here I mean, in the background. I mean, can you blame the people yeah. for going after this smart, capable, like, doesn't have a spot on his reputation Duke of York um, against a catatonic man-child? <laughs> Basically. I mean... <laughs> that is what it is. <laughs> How can you... 
Maybe I'll support <sighs> the Yorkie. Yeah. <laughs> the Yorkie. Oh, I love those Yorkies. I do love Yorkies. Yes, yeah, they're beautiful. The Yorkshire Terriers. We're talking about dogs. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, we went catatonic, not catatonic. Dogatonic. <laughs> dogatonic. <laughs> Sounds like a drink. Like a vodka tonic. Dogatonic. Anyway. Henry wakes up. Yeah, just... Henry wakes up. Boop. I'm no longer... 1454 Christmas Day. It's a Christmas miracle. It really is. I mean, like, because they were... the How religious these people are. Bitch, and I'm I not think... even, like, a superstitious or religious person. And I think... I would think it sounded kind of like a christmas miracle like god being like no i think he got a really good present he was like, <laughs> he was like no i'm not kind of tonic anymore he's like i want to play with that train set <laughs> good morning <laughs> like i totally can see that he's like oh my god that train set's so badass he's like i'm awake did i shit myself <laughs> <laughs> oh, so anyway he wakes up it's a fucking christmas miracle <laughs> jackie has been holding poor maggie's hand for a year and some change and she's had this baby can you like even imagine the pressure that both Jackie and Ma- Jackie and Maggie have been feeling like cuz everybody's basically just sitting around waiting for the king to die yeah and like are you going to have a healthy son are you going to have a healthy son See, and so I don't, he- I don't think it's stressful for Jackie as much as it for Maggie oh it's definitely more but but Maggie's Putting the stress out on Jackie, too. And also... Jackie has babies, and she has them fine. Oh, no. Like, I don't think she was worried. That's not the stress on Jackie. The stress on Jackie is all of Jackie's fortunes come from Maggie. Oh, yeah. You're right. So if if the queen ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so he wakes up, and everybody just kind of (sighs) goes... Thank God. Except for all the people that don't want him to be king yeah, anymore. All the Yorkies. All the Yorkies. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what they said, Nathan. So like we said, like more and more people are like supporting the York family. Yeah, so there's tensions growing between the two families. But the as Woodvilles. Who should rule England at the The Woodvilles time. are like, no. We are, these are our friends. These are our kinsmen. We are supporting the Lancastrian Faction. Yeah, they married their oldest daughter Elizabeth off to Emily Castor and family. Yeah, so um, Elizabeth is. I think it's so funny that they marry their oldest daughter off and they're not even done having kids themselves. <laughs> no, they're like, okay, pump so them out. So they marry Elizabeth off, and again, go back and listen to episode 10 if you haven't, or if you don't want to, that's your thing. Like, that's up to you. But um, <laughs> so their daughter Elizabeth is just as fertile as Jackie was. And then, boom. A few years later, she has another baby. Jackie's uh, a baby. <laughs> Jackie's a grandma, and yeah, the family that they married Elizabeth off to is a really um, Lancastrian Super family Lancastrian, as well. Yeah. So they're just making themselves a little Lancastrian army here. Like, yeah. um, and Jackie's not done yet either, though. Mm-mm. She is Miss Fertile Mertile. So. 1454 to 1458, she had Edward, Mary, and Catherine. Make it rain, trick. Make it, make it rain, baby. Catherine was her last, her last child to have. She was, she was 43 <laughs> yeah. when she started having babies. She was 22, and she was pregnant almost every single year. <laughs> the only she did have one child that didn't make it to adulthood. If she had any mis- miscarriages or stillbirths. They were not documented. But what was she have time to? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, think there really? was, I think her biggest gap, I think she did have a four-year gap somewhere in there. No, they, but they did have, um, their <laughs> firstborn son did die at like age, like eight or nine. So, but out of 14 kids, <laughs> 13 made them to... 14. Back in a time. <laughs> like, if you go back and listen... Can you just even think about this? So, you go back and listen to the Catherine of Aragon episode. Mm. And how just, like, all these pregnancies, all these... And she, False like, had one... The, yeah, one child. That was more common than having 14 children <laughs> that yeah. lived... 13 of which live to adulthood. Bitch, what planet are you from? (laughs) So they are... There's some good stock. That's what I'm getting at. So one more promotion. Um, Richard is given um, this new promotion where he's the constable of Rochester Castle. 
And um, the way that Rochester Castle is positioned... Yeah. It's on, it's like, like the, they can, It's, like, over the coast. Yeah, and they and can that, see France. Yeah. So that post is usually supposed to be... Um, so you can keep an eye on, on Europe. On yeah, Europe. Or just Europe yeah. in general and yeah. make sure no one's coming for us. Um, However, it was actually a post to keep an eye on the, the throne. The, you, like, it was a post to keep an eye on the Earl of Warwick. Yeah. He's starting shit. Yeah. Which we'll get to the next time. Because drama. <laughs> Warwick. Wardick. Yeah. Then. You'll only get that if you've listened to the Elizabeth Woodville episode. Wardick part two. Wardick part two. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, but it's a big promotion and they get a castle. Like they, they're like, all right, if you're the constable of Rochester Castle, you have to live in Rochester Castle. And so they leave their babies in the nursery. Got this great ass place on the coast. We're gonna go live on a castle on the coast for a hot minute. Sounds like it's just love. And I guess come true. Ja- I guess Jaquetta just like um, left Maggie for a bit. She was like, "Hey, you got your baby. You got your husband's welcome back up. Have, have some time to yourself, y'all. I'm gonna go hang out on the coast with my husband. You do you, boo. So." Her life is going great. And I think that is a good place to leave her until next time. Until next time. And they lived happily ever after. No, not <laughs> quite. No, 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 they didn't. <laughs> Bye, guys. So thanks for listening. If there's something you want to hear, just like hit us up. You can email us at queenshistorypodcast at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter. We're at queens underscore podcast. We're on SoundCloud and Stitcher. And follow us on iTunes at Queen's Podcast. All one word. All smushed up. Queen's Podcast. Um, follow us on Facebook. Our intro music is by Kay Sparks featuring Beyond Belief. Thanks for letting us use your song, guys. Thanks, guys, for listening. Cheers. Bye, girl. Clink, clink. <laughs> Mwah.